it's very very important to have a <coughs> a relaxed connection with the inner child what is the inner child the inner child is that which gives you a headache when you had to visit mother-in-law so you cannot go there <laughs> it's the subconscious it's a very powerful thing that kind of some sometimes sabotages us if we don't have a real clear connection. So somehow to come in and, and meet this inner child and also love this inner child is very important because it's the early con early early conditioning. And so this child, I often see it as a last meeting before the heart, really, for the very deep meeting with the heart. It's the inner child. When I came to Pune so many, many years ago, uh, I have this very, very wounded child and uh, distrusted child. And for a long time I had a meditation where I imagined that this child is sitting with Osho. And there's nothing said or done, it's just they're, they're sitting together. And somehow, slowly, slowly, this child starts getting more and more soft and, and more and more open and more and more trusting, just slowly. So the inner child is a very powerful instant and most likely the subconscious mind that comes in and, and do something, maybe sabotage something that you want to do. So now you keep your eyes closed. And, <coughs> and just imagine that you are a grown up and you are going to go back to meet yourself way back when you are three, four, five years old. So you will go back with a grown up consciousness. And it will be very concrete, you will imagine that you are walking on these old streets, back to the house, the flat, where you lived. And you, meet, you will meet this little boy, this little girl, again. He or she is living in you, and will always live in you. So imagine that you are walking back, the smell you recognize, the, what you see of the neighbors, the cars, how it looks like. And you're looking at all of it and kind of feel how it was those days. You recall it. You will see the neighbors as they look like those days, even the model of the cars. The Volkswagen looks different those days than now. And sometimes there is a smell or sound of birds that can really trigger us and feel, makes us feel that we are actually there, in a sense. you're a little excited that you're going to meet this little boy, this little girl, how it will be. But you're just walking and getting closer to the well-known door. You may even remember the paint on the door. Or maybe it's a flat, maybe it's a house. Maybe this little girl or little boy lived with both the parents. 
or which is one of them, or whatever. So you go up in front of this door and look at it and smell it. And then you ring or you knock at the door. Girl, a little boy will open it. It could be a very strong meeting. You look at the eyes of this little girl. Boy. A little body. Maybe you can even recognize the clothes she has on. You look at her small hands. And you allow yourself to feel whatever you feel. That's where this child is living. It is the life of this child that you can see behind. <laughs> and you will go into the flat together with, or the house together with the child. If it feels right, you can take the hand of the child. And you go into the rooms, the living rooms, the kitchen. And as much as you remember colors, wallpaper, furniture, it all gives you a feeling of how this child is living. Because this child knows nothing else. And just notice also what you feel for the child. Just walk around in the whole house flat. So you kind of the paintings on the wall. And you also meet the young the young mother, father, whoever is there, stepfather, stepmother, I don't know. And you can feel with this grown up consciousness. You can kind of feel how they are together, these parents. And how is the child doing with them? Because you have a grown up consciousness so you can see and feel. Is it a happy couple? If there is a couple. Or is it a happy mother? Recalling something you know very deep down. And it's important to meet it so it doesn't sabotage you. So you're aware of everything in the past as much as you can.
How is this child living there? Is the child safe? Is the child having any work keeping their parents together? Very often is the case. That the child is having a function keeping the parents together. And sometimes parents are confessing to the child about the other parent. Just look at it. Sometimes a child is carrying a lot. Sometimes the child feels his or her fault if the parents doesn't function together. The child feels guilt. Feel if there's anything like this. Often parents put in a lot of responsibility for on the child. It's not your fault if the parents cannot function together. I know a woman one time when we did this kind of work and she said every time if I can just manage to get over to my father then I don't have to go to bed. Something very simple like that. How the child using the parents and the parents are not straight with the child. If she could get over to the father where he was sitting in his easy chair then the mother could not get her and put her to bed. Something like that. This is something you know also from your past. My mother would threaten me and say, if you don't behave, I tell it to father when you come home from work. What a terrible thing. Just wait until father comes home. sit there and wait and I know he will beat me is there any kind of manipulation here in your childhood are you have secrets with your mother that the father don't know about or whatever naked? Are they touching each other? I often saw my parents together naked, also kissing each other. It was very important.
then see if uh, if the child has a, his own room or a place where she or he has his toys. And maybe she, he or she will show you what is very important toys. And see how close you can be with the child. Can you take her in up on your lap? And love him or her. Children needs love. Grown up can give love. You see how much you can do to give the child up. And that is something you can also do as a meditation. So you're healing this connection. If you can take the child up in your lap, how is that? This little body, frail. In a little while, we're going to say goodbye to this child. But in a way, we can never really say goodbye, somehow. Child will always live in us. And it's a good idea to connect with this child. We could spend much more time on it. This was we could put you together in small groups, two or three, and you could.